I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Ankit Gar, the founder and CEO of EasyFi. Ankit, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here. Thank you, Ashton. Nice to be here. Likewise. I would love to just kick off our interview by diving right in and just starting with an overview and the focus of the EasyFi platform. Absolutely, Ashton. So uh, essentially, EasyFi is a lending platform, a uh, lending protocol, which is built on Matic, which is now Polygon, a layer, mm -hmm. two, uh, layer two blockchain. The idea which, with, uh, with which we started with EasyFi is essentially DeFi has an enormous supply of capital. The avenues in which that supply can be deposited in a more trusted manner in terms of in a decentralized way are the ones which are yet to be explored. And with that journey, we started EasyFi. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, the first challenge when we started EasyFi was that of a gas problem. And we saw that in times to come, this problem is going to uh, uh, aggravate rather than reduce. And hence, we chose a, a layer two approach in, to, in the beginning instead of launching on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Yes, like any other initiative, this also had some downsides, but uh, that's part of the deal. Now, uh, things are getting better on layer two. So that was the first objective. But the bigger and larger objective with which we started EasyFi was basically to work towards on the, uh, on the adoption and borrowing side of lending marketplaces, mm -hmm. money markets. So what we are trying to build more and more interesting avenues for people to utilize their existing digital assets in different forms and be able to, uh, uh, you know, take loans for their various needs. Mm -hmm. And during the show, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll chat about a bit more on this. Mm -hmm. But that is a brief about the, the, the thesis and ethos behind EasyFi. Mm hmm. Well, thank you for that, Ankit. And yeah, I appreciate that you mentioned talking about the borrowing side because you really need to have both sides working and we will dive into those details. And, and the fact that you're also building on the Matic network, which is now Polygon, uh, to help with that scalability issue because that's really been a problem. You know, the 50 yeah. to $100 transactions per, you know, dollars per transaction is just unfeasible, Absolutely. especially in the micro services, micro lending environment where people aren't even, you know, they're, they're borrowing $50 and then it costs $50 to do that. It's just unfeasible. Um, so that's really Absolutely. interesting. Now, do you have a, uh, something unique about EasyFi uh, that differentiates it from other lending platforms? Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, there are many things there. Whether you talk about the un under collateralized and uncollateralized loans that we are working on, whether you talk about the most you know, more innovative uh, uh, collateralization options that we are bringing in, in recent last couple weeks, we have launched a couple new uh, collateralization options, and there are many more to come as we will progress. So these definitely differentiates us from a plain vanilla uh, uh, lending platform. Great. And I think that the fact that it's also built with Polygon is a unique factor as well. And I just want to dive into that because people that are getting involved with DeFi uh, see these transaction fees and they don't really understand you know, why is it so expensive and how do we solve this? And so what your huh. team has done is, is partner with Polygon as a layer two solution. Now, yeah. for somebody that's borrowing or somebody that's lending, is there a different process for this or is everything the same? And does it make it easier or harder for people to lend by having a layer two solution on top of the Ethereum network? Absolutely. So uh, basically, that's the, a problem with all layer two solutions from Ethereum right now is a little bit of onboarding and offboarding hitch. Mm -hmm. But once somebody moves into there and he is comfortable with that, and they don't want to come back to uh, Ethereum that way. Once they go, go, go into Matic, then the costs of a transaction definitely go down tremendously. Mm -hmm. So if I take an example, if you are taking, if you want to, if you have Ethereum, you want to take a loan against your Ethereum and you want to buy, let's say, Link against with the dollars that you take a, a loan. Mm -hmm. Then you want to sell the, the Link and you want to return your loan and get your Ethereum free. These entire six set of transactions on Ethereum will cost you maybe a thousand dollars today. Yeah. Looking at the Ethereum price and the gas congestion and everything, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. If all these transactions are you intend to do on uh, Polygon on Matic, right? Mm -hmm. You you get to uh, be able to do these transactions using EasyFi 
and maybe other decks which is like a uniswap of uh, in polygon called quickswap so if you if you uh, consider easy as compound of polygon and quickswap as uniswap of polygon then then with these two products you can easily get these transactions done in less than about a dollar wow yeah that's so quite the difference $1000 to a dollar <laughs> you can imagine the difference right yeah now the the, the challenge uh, the the other side because everything is not always as rosy and it's is the is the part of the game right mm -hmm. so uh, the the challenge today people face is is when they don't understand they don't understand the value when they move tokens back to <coughs> i'm sorry when they move tokens back to uh, uh, matic from uh, uh, ethereum mm -hmm. that is the time they, there is a little bit of a delay in terms of moving it it takes 5 mm -hmm. to 10 minutes mm -hmm. and then moving out from matic or um, aka polygon to ethereum there also it takes up to 30 minutes sometimes mm -hmm. so that is a, a little bit of a gap that is there but that is also getting solved gradually as in polygon is working on various different initiatives to sim simplify this problem mm -hmm. similar thing is with binance smart chain so on binance smart chain also uh, the costs are very low and then when you move stuff from ethereum to Bin binance smart chain that's where it takes bit of a time mm -hmm. but gradually Mm -hmm. So once that will be there, uh, uh, the ideal situation in which I see should be ready and should be available in the market in overall as an industry, DeFi industry, in twelve months or so, mm -hmm. is that you do not know Ashton where your swaps are getting done. Mm -hmm. All you are, all you are getting done is a bet best gas fees. So mm -hmm. imagine what uh, uh, you know, Paraswap and all these uh, Kyber and all these companies did was they they gave you the best rates across multiple dexes. Mm -hmm. now similarly <laughs> imagine you want you said you go to a platform and you say that i want to uh, uh, swap my ethereum uh, to usdc which is the best place i can get with the least amount of gas now you mm -hmm. don't know whether that swap is happening on binance smart chain or mm -hmm. ethereum or matic now that is the ideal world for a user definitely right? this is where the industry is moving towards similarly so easyfi is here now easyfi is not just uh, po about polygon it is a multi uh, multi chain uh, 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 in, uh, product and with that vision easyfi is, is is the one is a product which is which was conceived as a universal multi layer uh, layer to solution where a user do not wherever there is liquidity whether it is on let us say today easyfi is on polygon tomorrow it will expand to binance smart chain mm -hmm. you know and and then wherever uh, the the liquidity is available for whatever kind of assets for a user it's one single uh, uh, thing mhm mm yeah that's great to know and thank you for explaining that and it makes total sense that it takes a couple extra minutes but you're saving you know, potentially $1000 for all of these transactions it seems worth it and even so it's going to be faster as time moves on and the in the platforms like easyfi evolve and and just make it a more smooth process and and really that's the point of getting more adoption is just lowering those barriers to entry uh, making it easier for people to actually use the applications without a lot of technical knowledge and i know your team is working on a couple different campaigns i was reading into the do more with defi uh, campaign that you're running can you can you talk about that campaign and what are your goals behind that oh absolutely i am happy to talk about it so basically do more with defi campaign was built essentially to get give people uh, more and more options to do with their assets that they have especially in the bull run to give them liquidity and be able to educate them on various things that a lot of people don't know about so most of the people in crypto markets who are not actually defi degens they don't know how to uh, uh, leverage and benefit from their assets that they are holding and uh, they can uh, get more returns out of it so do more with defi essentially is a campaign in which we we sort of are enabling those options on easyfi where people can actually come in and you know do more with stuff with what the assets that they're holding mm -hmm. so case in point uh, so we we did a partnership the first partnership under do more with defi with boring dao mm -hmm. which is essentially a a a Uh, a non ERC token rails to ERC twenty uh, ERC twenty ecosystem, wherein uh, communities of uh, LTC, Bitcoin Cash, NEM can actually participate into the whole DeFi uh, uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, via Boring DAO uh, rails. Mm -hmm. Now imagine this: you have LTC, 
uh, today you cannot uh, or uh, Bitcoin Cash, you cannot really put them as collateral mm -hmm. uh, on ERC20 and take a loan against it. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you want to keep your Bitcoin Cash and you want to continue with your position in Bitcoin Cash. So using Boring DAO, you can bring that in, get it wrapped up on ERC20 and then put that as collateral on EasyFi and take a loan against it. So you got mm -hmm. liquidity mm -hmm. now. Right. And with that liquidity, you can do amazing stock in bull run. Mm -hmm. Number one. Yeah. Similarly, similarly, uh, we have recently started stake derivative assets. That's one of the most interesting and, and, and an initiative very, very close to my heart personally is because it is enormously utilizing the, the value of your assets, which are locked in point of this uh, proof of stake blockchains right now. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens is. So, so there are uh, there was an evolution from proof of work blockchains like Bitcoin, LTC, Ethereum. It is now moving towards proof of stake blockchains like Polygon, Binance Smart Chains, etc. Mm -hmm. But even in including even ETH 2.0 for that matter. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, with all these pro uh, point uh, this proof of stake blockchains, what happens is that you deposit your assets. Uh, for staking in these chains so that you can continue to get rewards. Now consider this as a fixed deposit mm -hmm. where you have invested money and you're getting a return on top of it. Now <clears throat> to unlock this, there were liquid staking companies which came in. So liquid staking companies came in, they started to give you a proof of your investment of the, uh, uh, as, a, as a token, as a derivative token that you have invested, let's say, 1000 Ethereum in ETH 2.0 uh, as your stake, and then you get a derivative token against it. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, you got it. But now what will you do about it? Mm -hmm. What will you do with it? Unless there are more avenues, right? So EasyFi gave that avenue where mm -hmm. you can put that asset as a collateral and you can get liquidity out of it. Mm -hmm. That's great. So so, so, so you, you, you have Matic. You stake Matic, while your original Matic are still earning interest, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the staking rewards, that is a you get a derivative uh, Matic token, which you bring to EasyFi, put it as collateral, and you take USDT. Mm. Yeah, double win. So, so, so that's what, De that's what uh, Do More with DeFi is all about. And there are many more such uh, interesting collateralization options uh, uh, planned in the queue for people to be able to do more with DeFi. Mm -hmm. That's great, Ankit. And that's sort of, you talked about staking and, and um, voting with the voting down and governance a little bit. And I'm curious to know if the easy token is incorporated into the platform through those functionalities as well, or is there a token economic system in the platform and how is it sustainable? Okay, so uh, definitely uh, one of the most important uh, uh, function of easy token is going to be governance. Then as I said, we are going to go multi-chain. So another uh, important uh, function that Easy Token will uh, perform is going to be acting as a settlement instrument across multiple chain uh, in flow outflow, because mm -hmm. there the the transactions will have to happen in real time. Then in that particular case, Easy will play a more very important role as a cross settlement cross uh, uh, cross chain settlement mm -hmm. uh, currency. Mm -hmm. And then over <coughs> moreover, there are other options, other uh, incentivization programs that we are running for the community from in the concept in the context of staking community incentivization user acquisition so these are the important roles that that easy is playing that's great and you do have quite a bit of campaigns going on right now can you give a glimpse into the roadmap or if there's anything big that's coming up for easyfi you know throughout this bull run or at least in the next 6 months uh, yes, there are many things that we are working on the product side. As I said, we are the all our uh, uh, options uh, are working and driven through a framework. So we don't do random mm -hmm. partnerships. We don't do random stuff. Many mm -hmm. people in crypto in the past have been doing random partnerships just for the sake of partnerships. So EasyFi One is very very selective for when it does a partnership. Mm -hmm. It is always aligned and driven with a particular campaign or a particular framework of things that we are building towards. Uh, uh, so uh, towards a particular initiative. Case in point, we recently did two partnerships, but both of them were aligned with the de derivative stake tokens. For example, mm -hmm. we did with Ramp, we did with Staffy. Both are liquid mm -hmm. staking companies. And we have a couple other lined up for with liquid staking companies so that mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. give people more and more options to bring it from more and more platforms to come into EasyFi and 
accept their derivative tokens, uh, stake derivatives against lending. Similarly, we will have a couple more campaigns where we are trying to open uh, or I would say enable more innovative collateralization options. Mm -hmm. So rather than so, so a big differentiator between compound Aave or cream finance and easy fi is the kind of collateralization options that you get on easy fi are not available anywhere. Mm. Oh. So, so, so that's the, the, that's a very, very unique point about easy fi because the, the collateralization options, we are consciously working on it and rather than just random listing, mm -hmm. many people come and ask us, why don't you load list this? Why don't you list that? Mm -hmm. My answer to them is guys, if you want to really just stake uh, lend BTC and borrow USDT, you have compound and Aave, boss. Why do I? Mm -hmm. You need EasyFi. Yeah. Ideally, EasyFi is supposed to be making a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well well said. Towards. Like uh, compound and Aave are not giving you an option to stake to to lend your uh, uh, to use your deri and derivative assets as a collateral and give you USDT. Tell mm -hmm. me one lending platform which is doing that. No one. Yeah. And that's the difference between EasyFi yeah. and others. That's great. Now, Ankit, we're running out of time, but on the flip side, I want to ask you about, do you foresee any upcoming challenges or obstacles as you continue the growth to, towards more mainstream adoption with EasyFi? Uh, yes. Uh, again, as I said, and these are like core interrelated and uh, uh, like we subscribe for these challenges by choosing mm -hmm. to go with uh, uh, layer two. Mm -hmm. But essentially, that is the future and that is where the direction and industry is moving towards. Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge uh, is towards sourcing the liquidity on the protocol. Mm -hmm. So we we initially had a very interesting and innovative incentivization program. So we were a, we were clocking like a 44, 50 million worth of TVL and loans. So we gave out 30 million dollars worth of loans in first 36 hours, which no layer two platform has ever done. Mm -hmm. So wow. we we understand that okay, people had that appetite. To, to do things, the only thing is they need to be incentivized better. Mm -hmm. And we, we did stop the rewards uh, and hence the liquidity died down and people sort of moved on. So, so liquidity and continuous uh, supply of money from layer one to layer two is a challenge, which we think is there and definitely uh, is going to be solved. But the point is, we know how this can, this will be solved. It's a matter of choice. Mm -hmm. So we are first bringing on setting the whole machinery up. Uh, once the whole machinery is there, the liquidity as a fuel will have will be brought in uh, with various different incentivization programs and uh, then the machine is running. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you for that. And we're out of time, but for the viewers that are looking to get involved with the EasyFi communities and just learn more about EasyFi and use the platform, what's the best way for them to get involved? They should join our Telegram, EasyFi Official. Okay, sounds great. I will leave that link in the description box below. Thank you, Ankit, yeah. for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure learning more about EasyFi and all the best with these campaigns and updates that you have moving forward. And let's follow up in the near future. Thank you, Ashton. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.